Hey everybody, so I have a new assignment for you today. Um, my remote learners, anybody who's a remote learner, remember that you guys are going to have to first go into class link dot, sorry, class link, um, launchpad.classlink.com forward slash seals. There we go. So you're going to log in this way, open the remote app server, and absolutely make sure that you click the Google Drive file stream before you open Photoshop, all right? So that's something we've gone over probably six or eight different times now at this point. So I'm not gonna make this part of this assignment. I'm um, just to kind of keep the length of the video uh, shorter, all right? Instead, and for my remote learners also, you'll have Photoshop open remotely. Um, I am running a native copy of Photoshop right now too. So just a subtle differences between the two. So here we go. At this point, whether you're remote or you're in person, you can go to file open. I'm going to have you guys browse out to the T drive and the Photoshop resources folder. And in there, there's an image called furry puppet. I'm going to ask you guys to open this image up. So it's just going to take a second to open. Um, this image we are going to utilize to do something fairly unique in Photoshop, um, which is actually animation. And most people don't realize that Photoshop can do animation. Uh, you know, if you if you hop online, if you ever, you've ever seen a website that does any of the memes, you know, the custom memes, guess what? We can do all of that stuff in Photoshop, all right? So to get this thing started, one of the first things that I'm going to ask you guys to do is under the window icon, I'm going to ask you to come down and put timeline, select timeline. And it's going to show this thing down here, okay? That's pretty important for moving forward when we get to the actual animation of it. The other thing that I'm going to tell you in this video, I'm going to demonstrate and show you how to create a puppet that waves. Just know that your assignment is going to be creating a puppet that dances, right? So I'm doing something a little bit shorter. Your activity, which is more of an enrichment activity, is going to be taking it a step further and making your puppet dance, all right? So to get this whole thing started, before we do anything, what I always recommend that we do down here is I'm just going to make, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to duplicate layer. I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to right click and do it again. And for you guys that are going to be making him dance, you're going to need more than a total of three layers here. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple for this, you know, for the sake of making the video short. Down here in the layers, I'm going to ask you to call this first one the original and turn it off and hopefully never use it again. This is our backup parachute. So if we goof any of these up, which is a possibility, we can always come down to here, right click it and duplicate the layer and just, you know, create a brand new one and then just delete the layer we messed up. For these guys, let's just call them one. Let's try that again. Let's call them, oh, my num lock is off. There we go. Let's call them, I'm making this look easy. Let's call it one, let's call it two, and let's call it three. All right, so just a layer one, two, and three, and here's the original. The thing that's a little tricky about this, because you have technically right now four layers that look exactly the same, I always recommend that we turn all the layers off that we're not working on. So the original and the other two. Right now you can see I have layer one on, but I actually am working in layer three and that's not gonna work. So if layer one's the one I have on, I wanna select layer one to show that I'm working on it. Now, for our guy to wave, we're gonna, we're basically gonna have three settings here. And if I was in person, I would demo this. I would have both of my hands up in the air and that's where we'll be for, for, for uh, layer number one. For layer number two, I would move his arm down a little bit further. And for layer number three, I would move his arm down even further, okay? And then we'll just toggle those on and off. You guys have to sort of imagine me standing here with both my arms up for layer one, partway down for layer two, and all the way down for layer three. So for layer one, it's done. We're going to leave it exactly as it is. We're not going to touch it. For layer number two, we're going to turn it on and we're going to select layer two. We're going to go up to image. Sorry, we're going to go to edit. 
puppet warp. When we do puppet warp, one of the things I want you to do is you can just leave the density on normal or you could do more points if you want. It doesn't much matter. But one of the things that's important is that you pin this guy down really well. So each one of these pins that we drop, it keeps it from being moved when we move some of the other pins. Now, let's say you're doing this and all of a sudden you're like, uh-oh, I completely messed this thing up. You know, he's upside down and bad things are happening. You can either click this, which cancels it, or you can remove all the pins, which allows you to start over. So you can get that out of your system and play around with it a little bit if you want. So I'm just gonna pin him down here really well. As I mentioned, I'm gonna get a couple of pins along his arm, pin his legs down. And when I'm ready to move his arm, remember I'm gonna go about halfway, I'll put one pin on his hand, move it down just a little bit. And to set everything in place, I'm gonna hit the check right here. So check this out. If I turn layer one on behind it, you'll see that everything else is the same except for I moved his arm down a little bit. So let me turn that off. Let me turn layer two off and I'll turn layer three on and make sure I select that layer. I'm going to go back and do the exact same thing. So I'm going to edit Puppet Warp. I can leave it normal or more points. It's, it's up to you guys. I'm going to pin them down again pretty much the same way. And be careful with this because you can mess it up as you're pinning them down too. Okay, and I'm going to take that arm and move it down a little further. Hit that check. So now if I turn all three layers on here, you'll see that everything is the same and I have my three layers of my hand. This is layer one, this is layer two, this is layer three. You can also tell that because layer three is in front of layer two, layer two is in front of layer one, layer three is on top of two, two is on top of one, okay? Now, all of the hard work happens here. If you're gonna make your guy dance, you, you're gonna have to have layers where you're not only moving his hand, you're gonna move his head, you're gonna move maybe his leg, and you know, you come up with something creative. For me, I'm just gonna make him wave for now. Now, down here, in the timeline what we're going to do you this is this is actually a button don't click it yet if i click this little arrow to the right of it we can either do a timeline or we can do an animation we want to create a frame animation so if i just select that how i actually create the animation then is i have to click this and it creates that frame animation so for me for what I'm going to do to keep it simple, I'm going to have these are layers, these are frames. I'm going to start with four frames here. And there's some similarity between frames and layers. They're kind of like cousins. Um, so this is how we add a new frame. So I'm just going to do two, three, and four. Now this is really neat how this works. If I go into my frame number one, notice on here you can even see it. If I could zoom it in, which I can't, but if I could zoom it in, you'll see that it has all three of the layers on. You'll see it here too. Well, the reason for that is we have all three layers on over here. The only layer I really want on in my frame number one is frame one. So there it changed it to there. Okay, and it did it for these too. When I click into frame number two, I don't want to have layer one on. I want to actually have layer two on and just layer two. For frame number three, I want to have layer three on. For frame number four, I want to have just layer two on. And if you guys watch this, there's frame one, layer one. Frame two, layer two. Frame three, layer three. Frame four is layer two, and then it loops back up to here. We'll eventually loop it, which goes to frame one. So at the end of the day, what we have is we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this, and then it goes back to here. And then it loops and loops and loops. So you actually create the motion in the layers. You turn the motion on by picking which frame you actually want to have on. All right. Now, let me show you how to actually create the animation. Down here, we have to adjust the amount of seconds. So let's do it at point 0.1 for all of these. Point 0.1, point 0.1, point 0.1, point 
and point one. We want to make sure that this is on forever. I think it defaults to once. We want to make sure it's forever. And to actually play your animation, all you've got to do is hit the play button right here and check it out. Now you've got an animated, you've got an animated uh, puppet. And it's just literally circulating those layers together. So if we turn it off, we actually play around with this. Let's make it no delay. Let's see what it does. Let's see what the change is. Still on forever. And there we go. Kind of looks like he's swatting at bees. So there is your animation. That's how you create it. Again, you guys are going to make your guy dance. So be creative. You might need to have six or eight, maybe 10 layers over here. Down here, you might need to have 10, 12, or 14 different frames to make it work. So have fun with it. Don't be afraid to put a, bit, a little bit of extra time in it. I'm going to make this assignment worth more money. Yeah, worth more money, worth more points. Uh, so that our people that are really putting some effort into this, you know, are going to be um, rewarded with it. Okay. The only thing left to do here at this point, let me pause this because it's making me crazy. I'm going to have you guys go to file. I'm going to have you guys go to save as. I'm going to have you browse to the Google Drive file stream and my drive and classroom. You're going to browse to your proper folder. And you're literally going to call this your first name, your last name, Furry Puppet. Go ahead and save that. You may have to say OK there. And then you're going to turn it in through Google Classroom, which I, I don't have the assignment putting Google Classroom right now. But uh, at this point, all of you guys have absolutely, um, you've absolutely handed in every assignment for me. So this should be a no-brainer for you. Just hand handed in through whatever class you are in in seventh grade. All right, so do a, do a nice job. Make sure that everything is complete. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this assignment. And we'll see how it turns out. Talk to you soon.